Hi, it's time to cut the nonsense. Let's talk mind sense. I'm your host, Meena J. Uman ki baat hai to hoti rengi. Keep watching mind sense. Me hu aapki host, Sarita Chant. And in the studio with us today is the one and only Camilla Singh. Who <laughs> doesn't need no introduction. I know. Because all our viewers know her, but no, it's not that, that true. It is true. <laughs> Yes, so, so it's so nice to be on Mind Sense. It's yes. uh, excellent. I watch Mind Sense. Mm -hmm. I think Saturdays at four o'clock, mm -hmm. and uh, the other day Wednesdays at ten. Wednesdays ten p.m. Yeah, yeah you guys Mondays are doing Tuesday, yes. excellent work, bringing different guests, talking about the issue. I think that's what we need, all need to do and educate each other and talk about the issue, right? That's exactly. Mm -hmm. And I know you've been doing this for so many years, <laughs> right? Asian the Pulse. Idea. Yeah. <laughs> so you have Asian Pulse, the Camilla Singh Show, and. And, um, Fiji in what focus. Are the Fiji in focus, yeah. Mm -hmm. So many years you've been doing this. A lot of changes within the years. So like, I think at least two decades you've been in this industry. Yeah, a little over, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. I yeah. think um, Camila G has been on our show before. And just to, uh, you know, just a little recap of, you know, Camila G came from Fiji from a small town bar. And then <laughs> here she went to Kidamat. She goes, I didn't migrate from Fiji to Canada to go and live in Kidamat. <laughs> so she moved to Vancouver. <laughs> packed everything, packed the car, packed the kids and moved to Vancouver. And she has been here ever since. So... So in this big city, Camila, do you have yeah. going on? I think everything is good. And mm -hmm. I think it's also good to remember we mm -hmm. have one life to live. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we worry so much mm -hmm. what will happen, mm -hmm. what can happen. Mm -hmm. If we move, remove that thing, mm -hmm. what will happen, what can happen, where I will be in five to ten years from now, mm -hmm. Put that away and live in present. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Learn from your past, but live in present. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We all do not live in present. We all live in future. What will happen next? Yes. Mm -hmm. well, we're planning for the future. Plan for the future, but who knows whether we're going to see the future or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, as we have all seen during the pandemic, mm -hmm. two years under lockdown, mm -hmm. so many people have gone from our people lives, that we, we knew, lost, yeah. yeah, lives people, that we have lives. lost, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's not the people that they've been elderly, they've been sick for too long. All of a sudden, you find out people are just dying. Yeah. So we could be the next, but that's what I say. It's so important mm -hmm. to live now mm -hmm. and enjoy the best that we have in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what are you doing these days, living in the moment? <laughs> <laughs> what is Camila up to these days? <laughs> living the life, <laughs> the big life. <laughs> I just, I don't worry about it. See, one thing, I think the biggest secret of everybody's wellness and being happy is live in present and don't worry about anything. People, I find, I have lived this life for a while. I have experienced. <laughs> I have seen that too. It's my own experience as well, mm -hmm. that people are chasing money. Mm -hmm. People, if they have one house, they want to have another house. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the third one. And then buy here, buy in Prince George, buy in Calgary, because the prices are more manageable mm -hmm. or reasonable there. Mm -hmm. Because here nobody can touch the housing, <laughs> right? It's yeah. gone beyond it control. Mm -hmm. So people are investing. They think, oh, they're going to leave it for the children. Well, the children just need one house to live, not five to manage and all that. Mm -hmm. And I think we are too much into chasing and seeing what other people are doing, but not content with ourselves and be able to live. Because when you know, we all know, that we have seen so many people that they are gone, mm -hmm. that they did not take a dime with them. Mm -hmm. So wh what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Why are we chasing the money? Mm -hmm. I think the only thing after I leave or you leave and all of us are going to leave the planet one day, is what you have done for others. That is the only thing that yes, will yes. leave behind. Mm -hmm. So leave a legacy behind yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, that people will remember you for that. Yeah. And that's what my focus, that's what I've been doing. And I have been doing that for a while. And I think I'll keep on doing it as long as my health allows me to do that. Mm -hmm. Well yes. said, Guruji. <laughs> and um, I just, I just want to add to that, you know, Kamilaji, I think it's very, it's quite evident in our society. There's a lot of chari charity work going on. You know, our society is very charitable. They do a lot of good work too. But also on the other hand, you know, we have a, such a, um, a, a community where there's so much pressure to be big and be better and also you're building 
So how do you mesh the two? How, how do you do one without the other? You know, we are, we are always living this life of comparison of so, you know, status. Mm -hmm. And status comes with money and power, you know? So what do you have to say to that? I think uh, as far as I've seen, mm -hmm. if you want to have a status, do something good mm -hmm. for someone. Mm -hmm. You know, leave something behind. Because I always believe, I mean, I will give you an example. Mm -hmm. I work at PIX. So when mm -hmm. I first started, mm -hmm. I knew Mr. Sharon Gill. Mm -hmm. He is the founder of PIX, mm -hmm. a small organization. He is a social worker. His mm -hmm. vision was that we need <coughs> to have a foundation or something that yeah. our people mm -hmm. can feel very comfortable going there and everybody speaks the language. Mm -hmm. So he started PIX mm -hmm. in a very small, that was 1989. Mm -hmm. From there, I think PICS grew. Mm -hmm. And then PICS also have different organizations yeah. or different seniors housing, and mm -hmm. now they want to start or build a diversity village. Mm -hmm. And then when he was going into our Fijian community, asking for donations mm -hmm. for the seniors housing, mm -hmm. people were saying, who are you? Mm -hmm. They will mm. not believe him, they would not trust him, they will not give a dime. Even mm. though wow. this organization is a charitable organization, they can give you a receipt for you to mm -hmm. claim the money you donated in your income tax. Mm -hmm. Nobody believed that. Right now, if you go to PIX, Guru Nanak Niwas, mm -hmm. there are about 45 to 50 percent people are from our community. And now people are still calling me, Camilla G, how do I get into PICS? I want to go live there and see his housing. Mm -hmm. And I said, all you have to do is go, fill out the form, and there is about this big, about 10 years, this much big forms or files there. Mm -hmm. And when your name going to come, it's going to come. Mm -hmm. But I think we forget that this is something, if, even if we make a donation, I'm, I'm going to use it, my mother is going to use it, my children are going to use it, we're all going to, even mm -hmm. if we don't use it, mm -hmm. someone will use it. Someone. So when it's the facilities benefit. like mm -hmm. that is been built mm -hmm. for culturally sensitive, mm -hmm. we don't trust anybody. When it comes to money, I don't know what the money has that people do not trust where my money is going to go. Mm -hmm. You're going to give me $10? Mm -hmm. Okay. You're going to ask me where the $10 is gone. Where did you spend that $10? And mm -hmm. I see there are different communities that they don't question. They give the money, it's done, whatever. You, I gave it away because it's done or mm -hmm. offerings or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Give it away and don't question that anymore. Yeah. I, I know and I, I understand that and I, you know, I just want to speak to that a little bit more. It's, I think that, yeah, when we do give our heart and money, we kind of want to know what is the money going. But on the other hand, you know, we just need to give it good intention. You know, we can, once it leaves our account or our hands, we have no control over that. So give with you all your heart with good intention and hopefully that, it's, that money is going to good use. And if the person that you are giving yeah. and they are not using it what is supposed to be, mm -hmm. that's their karma. That karma. We are not in charge mm -hmm. of that. But we just <clears throat> we just do we just do give it whatever with you good can. Intention, yes. Yeah, with yeah. good intention and let that go whatever is supposed to meant to be. But as you said, Camila I think PIX is a very recognized organization. They have done such good work and you know they have brought such good um, housing uh, programs and also other cultural programs immigrants, to yeah. immigrants yeah. and you know for the South Asian community as at large there was no um, specific um, uh, assisted living home dedicated to that and now there's it's not just dedicated to South Asian but all people from all backgrounds mm -hmm. able to or ethnic backgrounds can apply mm -hmm. to live there so it's it's uh, catered to group like you know everybody all multicultural it's multicultural mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm -hmm. So this, this is what I say. I mean, mm -hmm. we question too much mm -hmm. instead of we say, okay, I'm giving and it's going to, somebody will use mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, for yourself, so you've been um, also with media for, uh, with your shows, like 20 plus years. How has the change? Obviously, social media has grown a lot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have different avenues <laughs> of um, having that voice out there like from when you first started to, you know, 10 years and then now. Mm -hmm. Every decade, like, like you know, there's a huge change. Yeah. So. so with the social media, as we all know, I mm -hmm. think as women we need to be very, very careful what we put on the social media. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I have seen mm -hmm. people have come to me mm -hmm. and they said, well, how do I get out of this? Because once you try to put on your profile, you put yourself out there, there's so many people out there, they're watching you. Mm -hmm. They're watching every move. Mm -hmm. And I believe, even I got my grandkids and all that, I never, mm -hmm. they, their parents will never allow me to put the post, their mm -hmm. pictures on the social media mm -hmm. for bad days or for anything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. You never know who is following what. Mm -hmm. I think you have to be so, so careful. And also, I think that that is one thing, but I think also I have seen there are so many scammers. Yes. You know, everybody, and especially I can understand when we are getting there, when you are alone, and um, either your partner died or you split up or something happened, that people check out what your profile is. Mm -hmm. Do you have a partner or you are alone? Mm -hmm. And they start sending you phone requests and they say, I'm stuck here or I need money and I love you so much <laughs> and all that. Well, you haven't <laughs> met me, you haven't seen me. You yeah. don't know I'm the most horrible person <laughs> maybe once you meet me. And these are young people, they, they call themselves doctors. And I, I said, if you are a doctor, what uh, have you seen in me? Why do uh, you want to have a relationship with me? And why should I be helping you? Oh, I'm stuck there, my bank account is frozen, I have children, I have million dollar in the account. As soon as I go to UK or USA, I'm gonna write you a check, I'm gonna give you double back and all that. I think we cannot buy into that. It's all scam, mm -hmm. and please don't buy buy into that. People, so many people have lost in our own community, lost so much money, mm -hmm. because they have this hope that, okay, this guy is sincere guy, I, he needs help, I'll help him, and then we could have a long, healthy, happy life mm -hmm. after that when he gets here. But that doesn't happen. <laughs> well, it's like that documentary on Netflix, right? The yeah. Tinder swindler yeah. right? about the guy who's living such a lavish life. So yeah, you know, when uh, social media, you are more out there. You're, you know, obviously you're more connected, but also people have a lot more access to you and avenues of connecting with you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at that level, yes. And um, I think, you know, another thing that I am just saying that if you do not know the person, don't accept that as a friend. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's another thing. I have done it because I wanted to have over 5,000, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But half of them I even don't know. And mm -hmm. they never say nothing to me. They are silent and one day I'm gonna clean up that. I'm just mm -hmm. gonna, gonna get rid of them. So don't accept anybody and everybody because you, you think or I think I'm very popular and uh, everybody like me, but it's not that. Who wants to be my friend? <laughs> so, a couple of things. Minaji. You are a wonderful person and I yes. think, you know what, it's, I have known, here, known you for coming up um, two decades myself. And um, of course, I want to be your friend. And I'm glad that you are mine. Um, you will well, always going to be my friend. <laughs> I'm watching. We got that on TV now. <laughs> watching. But I think the other thing is that you know, when we look at social media, and I think we also have to take responsibility not just for what the other people are doing, but what we are doing. We are exposing ourselves. Like you said, we're exposing ourselves when we. You know, social behind social media, behind the screen, we are glamorizing ourselves too. It's not, you know, we. When have you like? Very seldom you see people are like, um, you know, being real on social media. It's all about the fake stuff. So I think when you put fake stuff down, then we're gonna attract all the fake fake stuff. Mm. So, but but yeah, you're right. I think when we when you know when we are vulnerable for when we are going through hard times ourselves, when we are seeking that companionship, that uh, you know somebody to accept us and you know to care for us. And and I know there's people out there who are just scanning for that mm -hmm. and using that as a means to crawl under your skin. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have to be yeah. careful. They're not the ones who really care about us, but they will, you know, if somebody's, somebody you haven't met and saying all the right things that you want to hear, that's the wrong person. They're the wrong person. <laughs> the wrong person. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, obviously, it, like, before when you first started mm -hmm. um, in TV and, you know, you started making a name for yourself, the fan following was like like the real one, <laughs> the physical <laughs> face one, mm -hmm. and now it's uh, more you know like social media. You don't you don't really know. Like you said, you have mm -hmm. a, um, a friend list which you don't know most of them on there, and I think we all do. Mm -hmm. um, and you know sometimes it's not like being the fake, but mm -hmm. a lot of people want to put the good 
on say, social media, what's good, what's, what we're doing good or what's fun, mm -hmm. just put that on and mm -hmm. not, like, very rarely do we put, like, this is a bad day or this bad thing happened to me and I put it out there today, right? So mm -hmm. yeah. we're, not, we're not portraying that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I do you know what I think that, you know, think about going through the pandemic, I think a lot of us had to go through isolation. A lot of us had a very negative mental impact on our yeah. through this pandemic. How many people have you seen that they know I'm really struggling? Like, yeah. you know, not yeah. that that's what I'm saying when I'm thinking, yeah. But, um, you know, um, I do that too. I'm not going to wood that I have pretty good days, so I feel blessed. But um, I would be skeptical about, you know, I'm, uh, today I'm having a bad day, I'm struggling, I had a fight uh, with my yeah. son or something like that. I wouldn't feel comfortable putting that on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, exactly. you know, a good day, we all feel very compelled to share. I mm -hmm. know, I know. Mm -hmm. And that's why we attract the wrong yeah, people, wrong people some, right? yeah, sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, when you are putting ourselves, we use all these filters <laughs> and everything, the clothes <laughs> and, and the went makeup, around before. <laughs> the filters. makeup and the hair and everything, then we want to glamorize ourselves uh -huh. that anybody sees us, they will fall in love with us. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe I sometimes do that and could be I'm putting myself into that. but. I have lived the life and I am very, very careful what those people want. I can be very rude and mean. Mm -hmm. I said, if somebody wants to be friend, what do they want see me to be the friend? They are 18 or 32 years old. Maybe they don't know how old I am. Or maybe people can tell how old. What what kind of relationship would I want to have for somebody like that? For somebody who lives seven <laughs> continents yeah, away. away. Yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. So, Camila, let's <laughs> talk about, so I think that one thing is about, you know, I think the world has become a such smaller because of social media. We have social uh -huh. media friends across the globe. Yes. There's something which has become a norm, you know, as much as whether you want, I probably have more than half of the people that I have no idea. They're just my fan following, social media fan following, uh, fan following too. But I'm thinking, to be friends, no matter from what country you are, whatever's going on, why would they want to know your account number or <laughs> like, you know, um, yeah. what do you do, how much do you earn? So let's talk about a little bit about that. So, you know, when they're asking for personal information, all these people that it we don't know, like, you know, I it's, think it's so, so common, so common. People are going through and we, we know people who have lost money to these kind of scams. Okay, mm -hmm. Sarita, I'll ask you a question. I have known you for two decades. Mm -hmm. Have I ever asked you how much money you are making? No. I know where you are working. Mm -hmm. I know your job description. Mm -hmm. I know where you are working. Mm -hmm. I know your job description. Mm -hmm. But I mm -hmm. have never wanted to know how much money and what. So why, if I don't yeah. ask mm -hmm. and I don't want to know mm -hmm. your business, yeah. and probably you don't want to no. know my business, mm -hmm. why would we want to give this thing, how much money you're making, and all that to us? stranger you have never met or seen and he just popped up on the screen. You know what, Camila, I <laughs> never thought of it that way. I'm just, you just made yeah. such a good point that you think about somebody asking you, our close yeah. friends, like we have gone, like you say, yeah. we never ask each other, we don't care. That's not important, yeah. our friendship means. It's yeah. more important mm -hmm. because I'm not friends with you because how much money you are making. So if somebody's <laughs> asking that on your social media, so be... I'm friend. <laughs> I'm, I'm friend. Don't, <laughs> don't give any <laughs> information. <laughs> Yeah. And also, there are mm -hmm. so many people, they show off, right? Mm -hmm. They want to say, oh, I'm, I have this yacht. Mm -hmm. If you're with me, we could have the <laughs> time of all like the Tinder swindler. That's, that's the Tinder swindler. <laughs> and the gold, or oh, jewelry, and mm -hmm. all these things, and the brand name, clothes and everything, and the cars they drive and all that, or the place they live on the penthouse or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, it's that thing, right? <laughs> we all have that kind of perception or um, expectation, you know, that we want to live this lavish life and we want to be loved and cherished and valued. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, you know, it. sometimes it's obvious, but it's like that perception or that you know um thing that you have like oh i all of this and i can live this way and i can do and somebody loves me this much or somebody you know is so um attracted to me and mm. you fall into that yeah another thing i was gonna say mm -hmm. okay you think you are the only one that you are connecting with this person mm -hmm. all three of us sitting in here we know somebody they have come after each and every one and said the same thing. Oh, this yeah. is mm -hmm. glamorous yeah. life I have and all that. Mm -hmm. So how would you know you are the only one? <laughs> there yes. are other people. <laughs> you are not the only one. Breaking news. <laughs> you are not the only one. Don't get fooled. 
that's all I guess. I mean, we, we talk about social media and we talk about young people, but it's also to, you know, we need to talk about it with, um, you know, people, parents, uh, our parents, or, um, you know, people in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, um, that do are on their own, living on their own, or, um, you know, living their life. It affects everybody because social media has connected so many people mm -hmm. uh, for the good, for the better. I mean, there's a lot of pros to pros it, to it too, um, yeah. benefits mm -hmm. to it also where you mm -hmm. can connect to family, um, you know, from that don't live with you or that are far away that you might not see or connect to friends from childhood. But also then there's also the risks. The other models. risks and sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, price you have to pay for those things. I know. Yeah. And also, if you have, our experience have been, actually, I can speak for myself, my experience of the social media or meeting strangers is, has been very, very negative. I don't trust anything anybody says on social media. But maybe you might have a very good story or something good might have happened to mm -hmm. yeah. our audience or mm -hmm. somebody. We want to hear that too. But uh, I think most of the time, maybe that's one or two percent, but 98 percent are the people there. They chase every woman. Mm -hmm. They like the shape. They like the body. They like, and they say, oh, I like the color of your skin. Where are you from? And I said, I am Canadian. They said, no, I don't want to know you are Canadian. But where are you originally mm -hmm. from? Mm -hmm. I love your skin tone and all that. Why would I want to say where am I from and all that? A you lot of your information. You're doing a passport application, right? <laughs> yes. You're not filling out a passport application. <laughs> well, I mean that's the thing, right? So when we when we're talking about looking at you know older um, people that maybe are at home or maybe working but alone, mm -hmm. whether it is a female or a male, mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes that kind of connection to somebody feels like it a feels connection, good. even though yeah. it might be a fake mm -hmm. connection, mm -hmm. um, and to fall into that mm -hmm. um, trap, it could be easy. So, yeah. so I think maybe what we can talk about, how could we avoid things like that? Yeah. What can you do to make sure that you don't become a, a victim, a of, victim scams, of this right? kind of scam? Yeah. Either yeah. Even mm -hmm. if they don't want the money, mm -hmm. but they are on your Facebook, FaceTime, emotionally, most emotional scamming, emotionally yeah. mm -hmm. they are sucking your energy away. Mm -hmm. You know, and these people you don't know. You have to talk to them. If they call you, you have to pick up the phone and talk to them. You know what? I do not pick up the phone. I don't talk to anybody that calls me on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. I don't talk to anybody that doesn't have a number. Mm -hmm. And I don't talk to anybody on the messenger. Mm -hmm. That's my principle. Yeah. You want to talk to me? It's my number. My number is everywhere. Yeah. But please display your number. Mm -hmm. So yes. if I'm busy, I can <clears throat> call you back. Yeah. You know, when you work in this field, you have to respond to the people. Mm -hmm. But don't call me on WhatsApp because I may, I'm not going to answer that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, your question is how could you not become the victim? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I like you said, it, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, having that actual physical connection, putting mm -hmm. a face to it. Mm -hmm. um, um, sometimes, you know, like... The picture is not what the face is. Um, so having that, uh, knowing that that profile is real, and also I guess not adding people that that you don't, you don't know. know, and that some profiles do look fake or don't have much pictures, or you know, as a picture that is not real, maybe not adding them onto social media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, a, a very important thing you said, because sometimes we do have people on our social media that we have no interaction with, but. Mm they are sucking our energy, mm -hmm. right? Because they're connected yeah. to us through social media. Time to cut those <laughs> suckers, <laughs> energy suckers away. Not just cut those, <laughs> cut the energy suckers away too. Uh, just think, delete, 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 block, block, block. Yeah, you know, like Mina said, there's a lot of positives to social media yeah, too, but yeah. I think that if you talk about the negatives, we, you know, and the amount of time we spend on social yeah. media because yeah. we feel the need to, res to respond. It's a pastime, yeah. right? Like, it's like, it's like, like yeah. Like, mm -hmm. so, so maybe you're bored we need to or you're sitting them somewhere. With, with some better well, pick habits. up a book maybe, yeah. pastime, you know, get do something else. And looking at the screen so many hours in the day, which I do it, I feel so guilty about that too, that I think I need to shut that thing off and maybe pick up a book. Or I also, <clears throat> I also watch TV, but mm -hmm. I use... Watch well, it's kind of like that, right? Yeah. When you watch TV news or yeah. like movies yeah. or documentaries, it's like you're scroll scrolling yeah. on social media, seeing people's kind of lives, like segments of that. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like that, right? So we get used to yeah. just, you know, yeah, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. Like, 
Yeah. It's like an update. Another thing maybe we can very quickly talk about, and I know we are almost out there, Dan, because the war between Ukrainian and Russia, there's so much on television, on the mm -hmm. screen, and mm -hmm. we all are glued to that. <clears throat> we always see the bodies laying, the women yeah. being mad at shit mm -hmm. and all that. And so how can we even, we are watching television for our own peace of mind, because we are watching it, our children are watching mm -hmm. it. How could we not be able to get caught up in there. It's mm -hmm. a news, yeah. and news reporter has to report this, what's mm -hmm. happening. But as an individual, mm -hmm. how could we not get sucked into that kind of images that we see on television? So I think you have to limit yourself. You know, uh, yeah. yes, you know what's going on around the world, but it's not necessary that you have to watch the news or watch those images. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially your family, your kids, you don't actually mm -hmm. have to see everything. Mm -hmm. um, so limit that. As long as you know what is going on in the world, and obviously those kind of images and news does affect you yeah. mm -hmm. or because of what you see. So I think you have to limit. I know for personally, for me, I don't watch news on TV at all. Mm -hmm. I only read news, so this is why I select. Um, you know, I feel like when I'm watching news on TV, I, you know, I will have to press um, stop or something like that. But when I'm reading, I can choose if something that I'm reading, I don't like the content, I can skip it. So I don't watch news on TV. I do watch TV though. But I think, you know what, we have to be mindful, like you said, Kamila Ji, how, what we are watching, what we're exposing ourselves to, what kind of impact does it have yes. on us? Then we have to take on the responsibility of how we can, like Mina is saying, to limit ourselves and look at some an alternative what we can do. For example, reading a book, mm -hmm. you know, and I think um, instead of, hi, Kamila Ji, mm -hmm. how are you doing? Pick up the phone call, <laughs> pick yeah. the phone and make a call yeah. to actually yeah. have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important because we have been under or living under pandemic for mm -hmm. two years. Mm -hmm. Everybody is coming out and mm -hmm. we have gone wild, parties and mm -hmm. all that. Everybody is getting tickets, everybody is shopping. Before I used to come here, there were no park, cars parked outside mm -hmm. in this mall mm -hmm. complex. Yes. Now, very hard to find parking. Right. Everybody is shopping mm -hmm. because we all are excited. Mm -hmm. But we also have to remember we are not out of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We have to be wearing masks and take care of yourself and take care of your family. Mm -hmm. So just take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. well, thank you, Kamilaji, <laughs> <laughs> for coming on MindSense. It was nice having you here. Thank yeah. you. So until next time, this is your host, Meena Jay. And this is your host, Sarita Chan.